In this video, I'm going to teach you everything that I know about reading the defense in Madden 23. What's going on YouTube? My name is Cody. I wanted to thank you for watching this video today. If you are looking to get better at the game, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We post videos every single day to help people become better Madden players. In today's video, we're talking about how to read the defense. Now, I'm going to be basing this out of the trips tied in formation, but you can apply this concept pretty much to any formation in the game. However, if you are like me and you really like trips tied in, make sure you join our Patreon. It's only $10 a sign up that'll get you access to all my ebooks and i have a trips tight end ebook in there that we updated this week as i do believe that this is still one of the better offenses in the game so what i wanted to do in this video was just kind of walk you through a couple of basic things that are important when we talk about reading the defense so the first thing that we want to ask ourselves is are they in man or zone are they in man or zone coverage and the way that we're going to identify that is actually rather simple um, and it's actually really easy uh, to identify man or zone this year. So what you're going to do is you're come out in any play in trips tied in. And the primary player you're wanting to focus on is the outside cornerback on the left side of the screen. As you can see, he is lined up head over the top of this player right here um, over Mike Williams. Let me click on to him so you can see over Mike Williams over here. Now, if I was to audible to cover two, you're going to notice something really important. You see how now my uh, corner over there is outside. And then also that corner that was over the top of Keenan Allen is now on the opposite side of the formation. Now, what if they are in cover three? You're going to see basically the same thing. You see when they press, this guy is outside of Mike Williams. And then cover four. Uh, cover four is actually one of the more difficult ones because he does kind of look like he is where he would be at in man-to-man. -man. However, if I reset the play, the bigger, bigger tell is, of course, that the inside guy, as you can see there, is lined up just slightly inside of Guyton. So you see here's uh, zone. Notice that he is really exaggeratedly inside and then if i go back to man now he's more head up on this guy so we're really looking at these receivers over here on the left side to kind of determine um you know what what coverage it really is obviously Another thing that you want to look at just quickly, uh, pre-snap, is where are the safeties and where are the outside corners? In this example, there's four deep safeties, right? Or there's two deep safeties and the corners are also backed off. So that is another easy way to kind of look at it, say, cover four. And then when they press, as you can see here, you're noticing that that cornerback on the left side is slightly inside of Guyton. And then that's really the only tell. Cover four is actually fairly uh, decent to this to disguise this year, um, especially just kind of as a basic defense. However, in cover three and cover two, you're gonna notice a very obvious tell as that outside receiver is outside. Now, if I'm in cover three, sometimes the safety will rotate down in this specific type of cover three, they don't. So you notice that they are basically midpointing the outside receiver there. He's like kind of midway. He's not all the way backed off like he was in cover four. He's kind of more midway. And then cover two, you're noticing that the linebacker on the left side is moving inward, okay? So that is how you kind of read the defense from a standard lineman. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about some more advanced stuff here in just a second, but I also wanted to kind of go through um, a base alignment. So let's say that they are base aligned. This is a, the harder way, in my opinion, to read coverages if someone is running base aligned. That's why base aligned is really good. So what you're going to see here is this is cover one robber. I'm going to show you defensively. This is main coverage base aligned. Now notice that it's really wonky. Now, um, if I was to go ahead and press my coverage, watch what happens. I'm going to press my coverage and notice, you notice there on the left side that, that that guy goes there. And again, you notice that that corner back on the outside is head up over Mike Williams. If I were to call cover three, you're going to see that now he is more exaggerated to the inside out of a base alignment. Okay, really, really, really important. If I'm gonna go back to that man coverage and I'm gonna put that outside player in a zone, notice, did you see him move there? Saw how that, that guy moved? See, I'm gonna man him up on the solo receiver. So he's in man coverage on the solo receiver, or not on the solo receiver, but on the outside trips receiver. And then if I put uh, Douglas, that cornerback, so let me get my icons right here for you. If I put this cornerback on the left side in a third, watch what happens. He moves inside. Okay, that little subtle movement is just a little basic tell that they are in, they are going to third on the outside. So in that situation, you know, now I want to set up kind of a clear out play, you know, like something like this so that I can clear out the zones um, because they're showing me that they're at least putting a third on the outside receiver. So the outside receiver is really the biggest key. Now, um, if they are in spinner, 
and they do this, you see that against trips, by the for the most part, actually aligns fairly well. Um, you, you're not in a terrible alignment position, right? But let's say that you are facing a compression set like, uh, let's see if we have tight in here. Go to tight slots. So if I was in a uh, spinner and we come out in something like this, you see that if they audible to this, those guys stay outside. But if we actually just kind of run this, if we were to come out in this play, you would see that it would look basically like this, where those outside slot corners are going to line up outside. However, if I was to put one of those guys in a... Uh, a coverage like if I was in a zone look see how they go way exaggerated and way more back to the outside so if they're way outside like this and you're running a tight set they're probably in zone and then if they are because again if I'm in spinner here you see that as soon as I go to man now they come inside so those are some basic ways that you could read the defense. And then the last thing I wanted to do in this video was talk a little bit just about post snap and really what, what I like to look for um, so when I'm reading the defense, you see here again, this is a zone defense that's base aligned. And again, you notice the exaggerated inside uh, positioning. So that's where we could do something like this and throw a streak against cover two. It's one of the real benefits, I think, to, to trips tied in is how good the, that this formation is against cover two specifically. But um, the big thing that I like to look for whenever I am reading the defense is I wanna ask myself, who is open now at the line of scrimmage? Like based on alignment, who's open now or how can I attack their alignment? That's one of the first questions I always ask myself because I just want to scan the defense and just kind of look at little things. Another thing that's really interesting is if they're setting coverage up, a lot of times they'll be like setting their adjustments up, you know, so they're going to set up some coverage and then they're going to run down. However, normally this has been my experience. If they're going to run a blitz, they're going to get right down to where they're supposed to be quickly. And then they're going to set their adjustments up from there, right? Because they know they have to get this guy in the spot to get the blitz to work. So typically you can also kind of tell based on that as well, are they blitzing or not? Well, you know, based off how they handle their user, they might be or might not be. Another question that I like to ask is where can I get hurt? What I mean by where can I get hurt is where can I get pressured from? So pressure in this formation ideally is gonna come from these two slot corners on the side. So if one of them blitzes, where am I gonna have an advantage? Well, in this example, if that slot corner blitzes, I'm gonna have an advantage to this quick out. So I could just put that receiver on a little quick out and have a you know decent chance of being able to beat man, to cover, man coverage. So where are they gonna blitz me from and how will I have leverage if they do? So slot corner blitz here on this left side, same basic concept, but this time they're gonna have a zone there. Well, now you see we can throw this, this uh, flat or we could have put him on a fade as well. So those are some of the basic things that I like to look at pre-snap. Post-snap, the basic, I'm gonna do another video on post-snap, but kind of a summary of what I like to do post-snap is you want to look at the safeties and see the rotation. If the safeties split, that's a cover two. If they roll, that's a cover three. And then if they kind of stay, you know, this the cover four I still think is the hardest to read. But if they kind of like backpedal, just kind of narrow, if they narrow backpedal, then that's a cover four, okay? And then obviously man coverage, they would, they would basically be man on the receiver, so. Thanks for watching the video. I hope this was helpful. This has been How to Read the Defense in Madden 23. If you really want to take your game to the next level, I'd encourage you to consider joining our Patreon. For just $10, you'll get access to all of my Madden 23 offensive and defensive eBooks. We have nine offensive and defensive eBooks, and we have more on the way. You also get access by being a Patreon member to all the updates to those eBooks as well. So if you want to sign up for the Patreon, head down to the description below and click the link down below. Hopefully we'll see you guys over at the Patreon page.